guys, Crypto Dad here. Thanks for joining me. I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. I just passed the 100 subscriber mark, and I really appreciate everyone that subscribed to my channel. Uh, I hope you're enjoying my content, and I hope you're learning a little bit, uh, because that's what I'm really here for. Uh, I enjoy teaching, and I enjoy sharing uh, what I've uh, learned. So uh, keep at it, guys. I really appreciate it. So today we're going to, I'm going to do a video based on one of my subscribers' requests, uh, and it's about verifying the bitaddress.org webpage. So let's dive into that. Okay, so the bitaddress.org webpage is uh, a unique website, uh, and it's a page where you can go and generate a uh, Bitcoin wallet, uh, a unique Bitcoin address with a uh, public key and a private key. And then you can print this guy out and save it. So it's basically a way to generate a Bitcoin wallet, uh, which in, is called like cold storage. You're gonna put it on a piece of paper. Now it's very secure in the fact that no one can hack it uh, because it's printed on paper. So the only drawback is you don't wanna lose that piece of paper. Uh, and you want to keep it in a secure place so no one else can grab a hold of it. Uh, and then after you have that paper wallet, you can move bitcoins in and out of it using several tools that are out there. I won't go into that today. But uh, so let's take, let's get into the, the web page and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The main thing we're going to do here today is verify this to make sure that it is correct. Because we've talked about verification before, it's very important. If we're going to generate a Bitcoin address and use it as our cold storage wallet, we want to make sure that it is uh, what it claims to be, that it hasn't been altered in transport, that it's not uh, a web page that's masquerading as uh, the bitaddress.org web page, and that it's not some adversary that is going to steal up all of our Bitcoins as soon as we move them in there or uh, you know that it's going to generate a bad address, all these things. So uh, how do we verify this? Uh, let's walk through it. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll launch our web browser. I like to use Firefox. Uh, Firefox is a great web uh, browser. They respect your privacy. Uh, so let's go over here to the bitaddress.org web page. I don't know if you've ever, ever been here before. But uh, when you go to this web page, this web address here, it, uh, it's a Java-based, and it generates this Bitcoin wallet for us. We move our cursor around to generate some randomness, and here we go. So we can print this guy out, uh, and we can use it as a cold storage paper wallet. But uh, how do we verify this? Uh, it's not really, there's not a lot of uh, detailed explanation of how you verify this. So you're kind of on your own. So I'm here to help. So the first thing we want to do if we're going to verify anything is we need to get this developer signing key. And it's down here at the bottom. See this PGP here. I'm going to open this up in a separate tab. And if we go over here, we can see this is the developer signing key. So we need to import this into our key ring. So the first step in that is uh, saving this locally. So we'll just go over here to save page. And as you can see, it's gonna be saved as a text document. Now we're gonna to wanna to save this in a nice little tidy folder that we're gonna create. I have a software folder on my data drive and we're gonna create a new folder and we'll call it bit address. I forgot the address. That's the name of our folder, and we will save this little signing file right in there. Let's open this guy up now. Go over here to software, to our new folder, bit address, and there's uh, what we just downloaded. This is the uh, signing key of the developer. As you can see, it's an ASC file, and we have it local on our computer, so we're not going to do a server retrieve. We're just going to do a straight import. So I'm launching GPA. Uh, GPA is the front end user interface for the GNU PG software. In our case, we're using Windows, so uh, we're using GPG for Windows. And uh, you can also install this GPA, which gives you a graphical user interface 
that uh, makes it a little easier to wrap your head around what's going on. This is our key ring. As you can see, I've got a couple of keys uh, there already. So let's do an import for the one we just downloaded. And I'm going to uh, pretend that I didn't do that before. So uh, we'll go to our data drive, to our software folder, and to our new folder, our bit address folder. And that's the file that we just downloaded. We're going to click open. And as you can see, we've got a public key read and a public key imported. And if we go over here and click on this, we can see there is a fingerprint. This graphical user interface kind of shows us this. Uh, this fingerprint can also be generated by the command line. But uh, in our case, I'll just uh, we'll do it the easy way. So if we go back over here to the main page where we generated our wallet, you can see down here that the developer put his fingerprint there for us to uh, match. And so we go to GPA, we can see a 527B starting, uh, and then here 527B ending in 4F5A, and this one ends the same. Okay, so we've got a match on the fingerprints. We're gonna get another match here in a minute too. So. Uh, now, uh, what is it that we need to verify with this signature? Okay, well, that's the next step in this process. Over here in version history, I'm going to right click on this guy and open that in a new tab. Okay, in the version history, we've got a lot of information that we would love to trust. Boy, if we could just trust it, how can we? Well, we're going we're gonna to verify that this is a message that was not altered in transport and signed by the developer. So you can see up here at the top, it is a PGP signed message. Down here at the bottom is the signing file. It's embedded in this text file down here at the bottom. And uh, so we don't need to download it separately. It's already inside the file. So we're just going to save this whole thing as a text message. We'll do another save page. Uh, you'll see that my file dialog uh, box opened in the same address, uh, the same uh, folder that we just used. And so we do a save here again. And let's open up and see we got a change log here. Now we could do this, uh, you know, with a right click verify. And we get this key not valid message, which is really not telling us the whole story. I want a little more detail. So because this one uh, looks like a, an outright rejection. So I'm going to use the command line. And uh, our trick to open the command line in a specific folder is to uh, hold down the shift key and right click. Let's try it again. Shift, <laughs> shift, right click. And see, now we've got this little open PowerShell window here. And that opens up the Windows PowerShell in the folder that we're interested in, the folder that we're in here so we don't have to navigate to it using our uh, old-fashioned DOS commands. We can just do a DIR and we can see that that changelog text file is right there. That's the one we're after. We're going to do gpg dash dash verify. Um, you can check out some of my previous videos on how you download and install the GNUPG software and how we do these command lines, uh, these commands, and uh, you can get up to speed. But uh, now uh, we're going to take this file right here. We're going to do a control C copy. And then you'll notice the cursor went right back here to the end of the command line, which is what I want. I'll do a control V. And that's the file that we're going to verify. And we hit enter. And as you'll notice there, we've got a good signature from the point biz uh, bit address dot org. And that, as you can see up here, uh, that is the the name here of this signing file okay and as you can see also let me go back here it regenerated this uh, fingerprint for us now you'll notice that we're getting this we're, we see the good signature that's what we're after you know job well done okay but we're also getting this warning uh, and that's just telling us that uh, we don't, there's no indication that the signature belongs to the owner. And we've talked about this in my other videos. The surefire way to verify that it does belong to the owner is to meet the person in face to face. And then he gives you the fingerprint, he writes it down on something, uh, or just tells it to you and you remember it. 
you get home you verify his signature file that you download from the web and you make sure that the fingerprints match well in this case uh, we haven't met this guy face to face it's a little bit impractical there are other ways not quite as good there's a circle of trust and then uh, there's the uh, we're gonna fall back one more to just verifying that the fingerprints match so he's given us the fingerprint on his web page it matches the one that was generated when we verified the file so that's good enough for me and good enough for our purposes so now we know that we can trust the signature and uh, because we can trust the signature we can trust this file because it was cryptographically signed so now we know that this change log is in fact the right change log it hasn't been altered in transport and it's signed by the developer and we can trust all the information in it okay and this is the information we're interested in we've got this little SHA sum hash here and we'd like to compare it to something all right so what do we compare it to we compare it to the SHA sum that will be generated when we save this web page kind of an interesting idea so we just go to the main web page here and we click save page again and we want to make sure that uh, the type that it gets saved is HTML only um, if you're uh, using your web browser on a page like this from the first time the default is web page complete we don't want that we want web page HTML only and we're gonna save again it was already in the same folder the previous folder that we used and here it is right here bitaddress.org okay so we want to run a a SHA sum hash on this guy and see if the hash that's generated matches the hash that's provided in the change log so how do we do that we use the SHA sum checker software which I have down here in my task bar we've got this MD5 and SHA checksum utility and I'll provide links down in the description for all of this software and check out my previous videos on how to use it so we click browse and uh, we're just gonna pretend that we didn't know that it didn't just open there <laughs> Uh, you'll probably end up out at the top level so you'll want to go to the uh, data drive and your software folder wherever it may be and the bit address folder wherever it may be uh, I like to keep things neat and tidy so we don't get things lost in all of the downloads folder uh, so here we are this is the file that we downloaded and we're gonna run a SHA sum check on it so we open and as you can see that's the uh, file name and this is the SHA sum that we're after and as you can see it does look familiar okay it looks very familiar it's got the DEC at the beginning just like this hash here let's copy this go back to our utility paste it in here and click verify lo and behold the SHA sums matched okay and then also I'll point out we'll delete that that if we go to the main page of our Bitcoin wallet you can see that the web address itself up here has that SHA sum in it isn't that interesting well there it is there it is again let's copy this guy let's go back paste it in over here and it is in fact the exact same SHA sum okay so let's follow the logic here we started with a change log file that we wanted to trust it was cryptographically signed so uh, we were able to verify it with the uh, developer signature that we downloaded remember we trusted that because the fingerprints matched so now we can use it to verify this text file here and now that we have trusted this text file we can trust this 256 hash SHA-256 hash that we uh, we want to match to what we generated when we uh, generated the SHA-SUM 256 on the web page itself it's kind of interesting so we saved the web page as a file we ran a SHA-SUM on it we got the 256 we verified that it matched the hash that was provided in the change log so now we know we can trust this web page and uh, by by extension we can trust the the Bitcoin wallet that was generated by this web page 
And so there you go. That's all you need to know, and that's all you need to do to verify. And now you've got your nice little uh, Bitcoin paper wallet in, that you can put in cold storage. Okay, guys, so that's it. Thanks for joining me. Um, once again, I'd like to thank all my subscribers, and uh, I've just passed the 100 subscriber mark. And if you're new uh, to my web page or my uh, YouTube page, I'd like you to, I'd encourage you to subscribe. You'll get alerted anytime I post a new video. And if you like my content, if you uh, found it enjoyable, and if you learned a little something along the way, I encourage you to give me a like. Uh, that's always appreciated. Hope to see you guys again soon. And uh, Crypto Dad out.